They have a mean age of death of 88. We have a mean age of 80. We're paying an eight-year longevity tax just by living here. Wow. Let's start off with, is a calorie truly a calorie when it comes to the processing of different types of calories? Everyone thinks that obesity is about energy balance. A calorie burned is a calorie burned, but that doesn't mean a calorie eaten is a calorie eaten. And that's where people get it wrong. You like almonds? I do. Me too. Almonds are great. You eat 160 calories in almonds. How many of those do you absorb? 130. You eat 160, you absorb 130. Where'd the other 30 go? In the processing of that food energy. Let's, let's make it realistic for a, a really nice big porterhouse steak, which I love, by yeah. the way. Let's say, Me too. let's say 800 calories. Yeah. Well, it turns uh, how, out- How much of that is, is uh, so that's what goes in your mouth. Right. My mouth. Right. How much of it is actually um, eaten in, uh, to stay with the, your calorie eaten is not a calorie eaten. In the processing of that, what percentage is actually goes into your total caloric intake? Right. So about 10% of everything you eat goes to just maintaining body temperature. It's called the thermic effect of food. But when you're eating protein, you actually generate more heat. And the reason is because it takes two ATP to phosphorylate that organic acid, as opposed to one ATP to uh, phosphorylate that carbohydrate for uh, consumption. So you actually have a net loss of energy because it was a, an amino acid versus a monosaccharide, a, a sugar. A 1600 calorie mm -hmm. uh, porterhouse with a nice slab of, of, uh, <laughs> of grass-fed butter on there. I okay. do this every once in a while, not, not yeah. often. With but some cream spinach and maybe some mushrooms along the I, side. Honestly, <laughs> I see it. When I'm eating a porterhouse, I don't want to adulterate the taste Okay. With anything else except maybe some some butter, maybe a salad okay. afterwards. But no. but let's say 1,600 calories of, of it's got some fat in there for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say a um, uh, thousand of those calories is protein. Mm -hmm. The other 600 are fat. Something like that. something like that, depending on how marbled it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so based on what you just said about the thermic effect of food and protein mm -hmm. in particular, yeah. of that thousand calories, how much actually is can we count? I'm not a calorie counter, but does one include as calories truly ingested? Well, if you ingested 1,600, well, that's what went in the mouth. But right. but but, but what is is going to go against your your uh, burn deficit? Right. So I would have to actually do the math to figure that out. But as a guess, yeah, back of the envelope, back of the envelope calculation, you're going to lose about 25 percent of that. Wow. So. We're talking 750 calories. Yeah. You know, so for, and to translate this a bit, so what we're saying here is if you're somebody who is trying to lose weight or maintain weight or perhaps even gain weight, you eat a 1600 calorie porterhouse with a slab of butter on it. 600 of those calories we're saying in this instance is fat with the remaining thousand calories. That's, that all went in your mouth. So but, you counted at your mouth. Right, but, but 700, but then when you compare it against your energy burn for that day, to maintain temperature, brain activity, physical activity, really it's only 750 calories. That's right. That's a huge difference. Exactly, and another reason why a calorie is not a calorie. Now let's take the third, let's take fats. So over here we have omega-3s, heart healthy, anti-inflammatory, anti-Alzheimer's, save your life. And over here we have trans fats, the devil incarnate, consumable poison, because you can't break the trans double bond. You don't have the desaturase to break that trans double bond. So it basically accumulates, lines your arteries, lines your liver, causes chronic metabolic disease, causes insulin resistance. Omega-3s don't even get broken down for energy because they're so important, they stay intact because your brain needs them, your heart needs them. Whereas trans fats, can't be broken down because of that trans double bond. One, save your life. Other one, kill you. They're both nine calories per gram if you explode them in a bomb calorimeter because a calorie burned is a calorie burned, but a calorie eaten is not a calorie eaten because one will save your life, one will kill you. Fructose, processing of fructose is vestigial. What you're saying is that we don't need to do it. 
That's it's, right. a, it's like the appendix. It's an organ for which it has no function. Exactly. And fructose has no function in the human body. Period. You don't need it. You don't need it. I love fruit. I eat mm -hmm. berries galore. Yeah. Especially since the price of berries seems to have come down. Mm -hmm. It used to be that you only get them certain times a year. Mm -hmm. I'm what you call a drive-by blueberry eater. Okay. So I'll just walk past and just take a fistful. You can't put them in front of me without me eating them. Yep. This is even difficult for me when other people I don't know are eating them. So. Right. Um, I eat lots of blueberries, mm -hmm. strawberries, blackberries if they're in season. Mm -hmm. I love them. No problem. Loaded with fructose? No. Plenty of fiber. Low fructose? Low fructose. Okay. In berries? Berries are the Thank lowest goodness. fructose uh, oh, yes. of all the different fruits. I was so worried fruits. about asking you this today. Not Thank a bit. You. Okay. Um, and fruit is okay because of the fiber. So the molecule, the fructose molecule is the same, whether it's in a berry or in a banana or for that matter, in a Coca-Cola. The fructose molecule is the same molecule. The difference is that in the berry, it comes with a whole lot of fiber. In the banana, it comes with a whole lot less fiber. And in the Coca-Cola, it doesn't come with any fiber. And the fiber is what mitigates the absorption. So when you consume the fructose with fiber, so your blueberries, you're feeding your microbiome. That fructose wasn't for you. Got it. So it's not what you do one day that kills you. It's what you do every day that kills you. And if you basically eat ultra-processed food, high in sugar, for 10 years in a row, it's going to show up in terms of your comorbidities. And ultimately, yeah, it will kill you. And we have the data to show you know, how many years you will lose. So right now in America, we pay an eight-year longevity tax. If you look at Japan, who uh, th they have a mean age of death of 88. We have a mean age of 80. Okay, We're paying an eight-year longevity tax just by living here. And we're talking about the healthy people. Now, if you have metabolic syndrome, it's a 15-year longevity tax. And uh, Sorry, if you have obesity, it's a 15-year longevity tax. And if you have metabolic syndrome, it's a 20-year longevity tax. That is primarily, not completely, but primarily sugar. It's also, you know, uh, omega-6s, it's also trans fats, you know, left over because now they're gone, but, you know, people are still suffering the ravages of the trans fats, you know, from the previous generation. If you look at Japan, 